Hello and welcome to this tutorial, one in a series where we're looking at Slim in Render Man Studio. Now in this tutorial we'll be creating an object which you all probably know quite well, the Pixar Ball from Luxo Jr. Um, to do this we'll be using, as I said, Slim, which for those of you not quite familiar with it, Slim is the shader node creation package which comes with um, Renderman and we've been looking at this a little bit so please look at some of the other tutorials where it's been discussed um, but we'll be working through a very simple shader with this so we won't be using any painted textures it'll all be entirely textures created in Slim or materials created in Slim. So if we start off with our scene I've created a simple plane and I'm going to turn off our grid here because I never like the grid unless I absolutely need it Simple polygon plane and a NURBS sphere. I rarely use NURBS, but I thought I'd give them a go for this. Move the sphere up one unit so that it's sitting on top of the plane. Now what I want to do is I want to apply some basic materials so we can see things properly. So it's going to have the random matte material attached to it. And now what I want to do is create a very simple lighting rig. So what I mean by lighting rig is it not just the lights, but I'm going to put some locators in close to where the ball is so I can rotate around those without having to refocus the lights back onto, um, onto the ball. So it's just a, a quick way of working for me. So if I just go back to my wireframe, create a render man area light. You can see it's created the light down there. I'll move it up slightly and I'll move it slightly further away from the sphere. Now I'm going to create a locator. So I have a locator created. I'm going to duplicate these. First of all, I'll, I'll, I'll name this area light to key light. A caps lock on apparently. Okay. And key locator. locator it puts in the underscores for me very nicely I will now duplicate these select them both and control D to duplicate so we have a look at our outliner I should have let me just see if I got this too it hasn't duplicated this let me just control D to duplicate that That has actually got it. Cool. Okay. So I will now parent the area light to the first of these. So holding down shift and select and P will parent it. And I'll select area light 2 and I will parent it to the second locator. Okay, so what I can do now is locator one, let's just rename it here, if it'll let me. Not letting me rename it, okay, we won't be too worried about that. Um, let's just rotate this around. So locator one, rotate it around to get yourself a light that's looking somewhere like that. And locator two, this one here. Let's rotate this around that way and slightly I'm zooming in here. Slightly up. Okay. So this is just getting a, a lighting rig which is working for us. Let's select these for the moment. I've got a couple of stray locators in here, so I'm just going to control H on these and get rid of this locator here because it's just confusing me. And then display show all. Okay, let's see how we're looking now. So this locator here, I could actually do with having the light slightly higher. Okay, let's have a look at what we're looking like in a rendered view. Okay, zooming in a little bit further, and let's render. 
So this brings up brings up it, our image tool. Now I want my key light to be slightly brighter, so I'm going to set this to three, which I know should work reasonably well. Let me just put this always on top. And I want to have some shadows happening here, so I'm going to turn on shadows, our ray tracing in our random and controls window here. So under features, turn on ray tracing, and we'll re-render. Re Okay, you see we're getting quite a nice look to this now. There's a slight second shadow here, so I want to turn off shadows from the second from the fill light. So rename this to fill and rename this to key. Yeah, that's key. Okay. Um so with the fill light, I want to turn off shadows. Let's turn off the ray tracing of shadows and let's re-render this. If we have a look at the difference between these here, if I go to Windows and It, we can see between this and this, there's a minor difference. You can just see some of the shadowing here. I much prefer to have one shadow which is motivated by a key light and the fill light doesn't actually cast shadow in a lot of the work which I do, just because I find it, it it's distracting to have two shadows in a scene. Okay, that's most of setting up the lights. Now we're going to jump in and start playing with Slim. Let's open it up. To open up Slim, we can click on this window here, or on this button here, I should say. Now, the first thing we need to do within Slim is we need to create a new palette. So if we go to File, New Palette. This is a collection of all the shaders which we're going to have in this particular scene, or this collection of shaders we want to put together. So it's now made a palette of shaders we can actually put stuff into. I'm going to start building a shader from the ground up. So the first thing which I'm going to do is make a material. A GP surface is similar, very similar to the um, GP surfaces here. RMS GP, MAT, RMS GP. Okay, very similar to that with slight differences. I'll show you that it actually is attached to the surface. So select the object, right click, Attach as surface, and I'll just change the color here to some other color and re render. And presto changer, we actually get the, um, the color of the ball changing to green. Now, what I'm going to do with this as well, because I don't want to have two lights giving out specular, I'm going to remove the specular element from this. So, this is our fill light, and I can Oops, let's just see where we are here. Specular contribution, drop that down to zero. So we're now only going to have one specular highlight, which again, I find favorable. Okay, so we have in our scene a shader which is attached to this NURB sphere. And as soon as I attached it through Slim, it actually gave us this extra node put into the... Um, the basic node of um, the sphere. Okay, so it's a shader binding node. Let's start building up the Pixar ball from this. Okay, now the first thing about the Pixar ball is if we look at it, and I'm lucky enough to have one here in my, my studio, um, it's yellow with a blue stripe. So we can build the surface color from scratch on this. Let's go to add a connection to the surface color and go to connect. And for this, I'm going to put ramp. RA will actually fill in ramp for me. So you can see ramp is now highlighted there. So I go to ramp. A lot of you will be familiar with this kind of ramp within CG. So I'm going to go from this yellow to this yellow. I'm going to put in a couple of extra knots here, here and here. I'm going to make these both yellow, which they are currently, which is cool. And put in some with, within there, which I'm going to make blue. So make these blue. 
Now the actual colors you can play around with yourself. I'm just using the color straight out of the palette here. So you can see what I've got here is yellows going to blues. And if I do a render now, re-render, we can see that working. Okay, possibly these yellows are a little bit not yellow enough on my scale of things. So let me just go to have a look and we'll punch up the value slightly. Okay, 0.797. Let's go and grab the others and do similarly with them. Just, it's a bit tricky trying to fit everything on the screen at one time. Let's put it over here. Okay. Let's go to 0.797 for all of these. Are roughly there. Okay, so it's that one. This one, bump it up, and this one, bump it up again. There we go. It'll brighten things up just a little bit. Okay, so we're getting a certain amount of bright color here, but let's let's actually increase the size of our light here because it may actually be beneficial to us to have more light in our scene. So we don't have to push the colors too much. We render. That's looking a bit more pleasant now. Okay, pretty cool. Now, how do I go about putting on the red star, which is on this? Well, the easiest way which I can actually do this using the GP shaders is to create an ensemble. And what an ensemble is, is a collection of materials which are joined together and then added onto the object. So I'm going to create a material ensemble and I'm going to hook in this GP surface to it. Okay, so the GP surface is hooked into the ensemble here. You can see it. It's important though that I need to attach the ensemble, ensemble, not just the GP surface. So in other words, if we have a look at what the, the shader is here at the moment, extra random attributes, we'll see it's this here. Okay, now when I go and right click, attach, let's see if this is working, object, select the ensemble, and attach. Hopefully, yes, it has actually attached a slim ensemble now. So you can see we're now working with the ensemble. What we can do with an ensemble is we can put in a co-shader, which will actually layer on top of our original shader. So I'm going to click on the plus sign here to add co-shader, and I'm going to create another GP surface. So materials, GP surface and hook it into the material ensemble by middle mouse drag, middle mouse drag, and ask what I want to join it to, and I say co-shader. So we're building up a network here. So the color of this co-shader, I'm going to make red, red for the, the star in the Pixar ball, and close. Now if I re-render, my whole bowl is red, which is not what I'm looking for. What I'm looking for is one laid on top of the other with a map between them. So there is a feature within GP Surface which is particularly useful when we're building up multi-layered materials here, which is called Mask. So this is Mask here. If I click on the little widget here to connect and go Connect, I'm going to connect a shape, so SH, and I can get a shape here. I can connect a shape into the mask. With the shape node selected, if I just render it at the moment, its default is checker. So we're getting a certain amount of each of them coming through. I don't want a checker though, I want a star. So I've selected star, and I'll re-render. So yeah, we're getting a star, but it's stretching all over the place and not giving us what we want. If I just move around here, we'll see the star is actually being cut through. 
but that's not particularly what we need. In order to actually get it to map on correctly, the easiest thing which I can do here is to change the manifold. Now the manifold is the way in which textures are mapped on through Slim. So we can use UVs, we can do all kinds of other things with them. In this case, I'm just gonna connect and it knows what things can actually connect into a manifold. So we've got things like um, Mayo UV Chooser and Place 2D nodes. But in this case, what will work perfectly for me is projection. So just choose projection and go to the projection manifold. And let's just see what's happened now. So it's gone in in the planar Z. So again, if I move around, whoops, if I move around in this direction and re-render, we can see it's put it on top of our, our stripe there, which is not what we want. I'd like it in the planar Y, thank you very much. And re-render. And there we have it. Quite simply put together from scratch using Slim, Slim Network, two GP shaders, one with a shape as a mask, and then change the projection of that mask so that it's actually um, coming down planar Y. And that's actually stuck with this now. So if I was to rotate, let me just go back into here. So if I rotate ball and render it, and rotate it again, you can see quite clearly that we actually have the Pixar ball. So just to make it slightly better, um, tweaking these settings here, I'm going to reduce the, um, the shininess or increase the um, imperfection in some of these. So in both the materials, I'm going to get the materials to match. I'm going to go to the diffuse roughness, um, specular roughness. I'm going to push up to about 0 0.025 or point, point zero 0.05. And do similarly with this, 0 0.05. And just do a re-render. So it isn't quite as shiny as it was. And it's looking much more like the kind of rubber material that the ball is made out of. So let's zoom in here. This is just a beauty render for ourselves. Re-render this. I'll change some of my light settings to get better shading. So I'll go back to my area lights. Let's increase our shading samples slightly. Uh, 128. And in actual fact, what I'll do here to make it even better is I'll just drop in a Renderman GI light. So we'll get some bounce light happening with this as well, which would be quite cool. Um, so that is an extra node which you can pick up from here, which under nodes in Renderman, nodes, RMS GI light, which will actually allow us to bounce some light around the scene. So we have a look at this and do another re-render. We'll be adding a bit of subtlety to it, so let's have a look at this in comparison to previous render, Windows it. So the previous render was this, and you can just see there's a little bit of extra bounce light going in there, which adds to some realism. So hopefully you found this interesting. It's, it's quite easy to actually work with um, the slim shaders, not to be confused with M&M, &M, but we'll do some more work on more complex materials with Slim in upcoming tutorials. But I hope you found this interesting, and I'll be back with you again shortly with some new tutorials. Thanks for your time.